looking to customize and set up Hestia WordPress theme. In this video, I will walk you through a step-by-step -step guide to make Hestia look like the demo, including how to use a logo, create the navigation menu, and so on. If you already have Hestia installed on your WordPress website, jump to the timestamp below. If you're just getting started, follow the steps until the end. First, you need to install and activate the Hestia WordPress theme. To do that, click on Themes under Appearance on your dashboard, and then click Add New. Here, type Hestia in the search bar, then you will see three themes as a result of your search. You need to install only the multi-purpose Hestia WordPress theme. After the installation occurs, activate it and then click on Get Started with Hestia. You are redirected to an onboarding flow where you can import pre-built site demos. Click on Not Right Now link below. As you can see here, we recommend some plugins you should install right after installing the theme. So, install and activate the OrbitFox Companion plugin and WP Forms. I will show you why later in this video, so keep watching. OrbitFox Companion is required in order to have access to some of Hestia front page sections, like theme, testimonials, features, ribbon, and clients bar. More of that, this Swiss Knife plugin comes with a quality template library, simple Google Analytics integration, menu icons module, social sharing, etc. Remember that you can check the timestamps in the description box below to navigate directly to the step you want. Now that we have everything in place, we can start the setup process so your Hestia WordPress theme will get a personal touch. To do that, head to Appearance, then click on Customize. Here, on the left, you can access the options every section and piece of content comes with. Also, you can hide the controls if you want to see the entire page, and you can toggle through different devices so you can see how your website looks on a mobile device. If you want to customize exactly what you see on the screen, without guessing where that piece of content can be changed, click on this pencil icon of the area you want to edit. Let's start by changing the site identity. If you have a logo, you can upload it here by clicking Select Logo, then Select Files, Choose the file you want to upload and then click Open. The recommended file type here is .png and you can see the recommended dimensions here. Once the file is uploaded, click on Select, crop the image if needed or simply click on Skip Cropping, then you are done. You can see the logo instead of your website title. Cool, right? If you want to get rid of the logo, click Remove or change logo to replace it with a new one. Further down, you can change the site title and tagline. This is not what you see in the big title section. Is your site title which you can see if you remove the logo. Try words that describe your business very well. Finally, if you want to display an icon in browser tabs, bookmark bars and within the WordPress mobile apps, Select the file you want to upload here, following the recommended dimensions. Publish the changes once you finish and move to the next step. The first menu you access in the Appearance settings allows you to set the page sidebar layout. You have the option with no sidebar. Then you can have the sidebar on the left side of your screen or you can set it to be shown on the right. Let me show you how it works. If you go to the blog page, for example, you can see the sidebar on the right. If you click on the left sidebar option, you will notice that the sidebar will move to the left. And if you click on no sidebar at all, the sidebar will disappear. This 
will affect your single post page template too, so choose it wisely. The page sidebar layout will only affect your pages. I think we have a sample page here, so I can show you how it works. If you have the sidebar on your page on the left, you can set the same sidebar to be shown on the right side of your blog page and single posts. If you choose one of the two layouts with sidebar, please make sure you have also added widgets in the corresponding sidebars. I will show you how to do that later, so keep watching. Furthermore, you can enable the sharing icons you see on your blog posts and the scroll to top button which will appear once you scroll down close to the footer area of your website. This will help your visitors to scroll back to the top with one click. Two options left in this area. One is the boxed layout. If enabled, the theme will use a boxed layout like so. Are you using Hestia for your blog? Don't need the custom front page. Just check this option to completely disable the front page so you can easily work on your blog. Two tabs here, font family and font size. You can change the font family with standard fonts or with Google fonts. To get a professional help, I recommend you use a tool like fontpair.co. One of the featured pairs here is Laura and Meriwether. To use that pair of fonts on your website, search for Laura in the Headings font family dropdown and then find the Meriwether for the body font family. It looks awesome, right? Furthermore, you can change the font subsets if needed. In the Font Size tab, you have options to change the size of your title, headings and content on your posts and pages. The best thing here is that you can set a different size for your fonts on a mobile device. Like so. Cool, right? Further down, you can change the font size of your big title section. Section title, section subtitle and content. Once you finish customizing the fonts, click on publish, then move to the next step. The background image is what you see in the background of your content only with the box layout enabled. If the box layout is disabled, your visitors won't see that image at all. If you want to keep the image in the background, you can change its preset in this drop-down to fill screen, fit to screen, repeat or custom. Further down, you can change the image position and then you can check if you want that image to be repeated in the background. Finally, you can upload a header image as well, but we will talk about this in the header options later. See the button below your blog posts that say post comment? You can change some settings of it here. The vertical padding like so and the horizontal padding too. You can use the arrows to go up and down slightly or you can type a fixed value in the text box like so. You can link or unlink the paddings and you can reset the values to its initial state like so. The border radius set to 0 makes the button looks like a square and 50, which is the maximum value, makes the button rounded. See the button near the search function on your sidebar? These settings will affect almost all the buttons you have on your website. The button in the big title section and the submit button on your contact form too. Publish the changes on finish, then move to the next step. First, you can disable this section like so. If you want to keep it active though, you have the options to set the background as a simple image or as a two-layer parallax effect. 
If you choose the second option, you need to upload the first layer image, which will be the background, and the second layer, which will be the moving object over the background. That will create the parallax effect when you hover over the big title section with your mouse. Further down, change the title here, the text here, and the button text here. You can also set a button URL here. This can be a link to a page, or a post, or to an anchor as well. Choose an anchor that will navigate to any section below the big title, the features for example. After you click on publish, click the button to test it out. I will show you how to use the anchors of each section later in this video, so keep watching. As an extra feature, you can align the content in the big title section to the left, center or right. If you choose the left or the right alignment, you can see that you have an add a widget button, which you can use to add a video in this section for example. That's it with the big title section. Save the changes and move on. Now, move down to the first section below the big title. The features section has three content boxes by default, which you can change, delete, or you can add new features as well. First, change the section title and subtitle here. Then change the content of the features, the icon and the color of the icon like so. Then change the title, the text and finally add a link if you want that icon to redirect to a page or post. Leave the link field blank if you want to deactivate the hover effect and click on the icon. Alternatively, you can set the link to redirect to a section as well. The About Us section, for example, which is the upcoming section below. You can set those icons to redirect to other pages as well. Change the content in each feature box, then publish the changes. Let's start by changing the background image. Click on Remove or Change Image Below. Upload the image you want to use and then click on Use Image. That's it. Furthermore, to change the content of this section, click on Edit here. Use the classic WordPress editor or any page builder you want to make this section as awesome as you want it. If you have installed and activated WooCommerce and added some products to your inventory, you can see those products here. Change the section title, the subtitle and choose the number of products you want to show. If you want to see how to add a product to your inventory, a variable product for example, check the recommended video above or the link in the description. That's it. We are done with this section. This is the section where you show off your team. Four boxes here by default, which you can edit, delete, or you can add new team members as well. Start by changing the section title, subtitle, and then you can customize the content of the boxes one by one. Upload an image like so, change the title which will be the name of your team member, then change the subtitle, text, and add a link if you want it, like the personal blog of your team member for example. Set the social icons with a link to his or her social profile. If you don't want to show all these social icons, you can remove them like so. If you want to get rid of the Facebook icon too, just delete the content of the field, like so, and then publish the changes. Do the same with each box until you finish adding all of your team members and finally click on publish to save the changes again. The ribbon section is hidden by default, but you can activate it like so. 
click on the eye on the left and you'll notice the section becomes active immediately. Alternatively, you can activate or deactivate any section by unchecking or checking this box inside the section options. Changing the content in this section is easy. Here is how you can change the background image, the text and the button text. If you want to set a link that redirects to a subscription form, for example, enter the link here. You can use this section to promote a special offer or to navigate to the subscribe to our newsletter section or to the contact section as well. Use your imagination to get the best out of it. Testimonials are strong marketing tools. In this section, you can write three, two, one, or even more than three testimonials. You can modify the default content by uploading a new image here, changing the title, which is your client name, the subtitle and the text. Then if you want it, you can add your client website here, for example. More of that, you can add a new testimonial by clicking this Add New Testimonial button. Then you just need to fill up the blank fields and you are done. This section is meant to show the logo of your clients. It is as simple as uploading an image here, PNG type preferably, and then, optionally, you can add a link to their website if you want it here. Feel free to use this section for other purposes as well. Here is a nice trick. Delete the fields until the last one and upload a button instead of the logo. Make the link redirect to the contact section by adding the contact anchor here. As you can see, if you click on the contact us button, you will scroll down automatically to the contact section. Cool, right? Let's move to the subscribe section. This section uses the SendingBlue service to automate your email marketing efforts. So, the first step should be to install and activate the plugin. Click on Install and Activate here, then wait until the plugin will be installed. Once the installation process occurs, you will notice the Create SendingBlue account button. Click on that button and create your account for free. Enter your company name, your email and choose a strong password to access your account then click on Sign up for free. Check your email to activate your account and then log in to get the API key. You need to connect your account with your WordPress website. Here, copy the second key and then go back to your WordPress dashboard. Click on Send in Blue, Home link suggested here. Paste the access key and then click Login. After you get the confirmation message, go to the forms here and edit one of your default forms so you can have a simple subscription form with one field, the email address. To do that, delete the code that stands for the name field. Change the name of your form to subscribe, for example, so you can easily recognize it if needed, then save the changes. If you want the form to be exactly how it looks on the demo, you can copy and paste the code from the documentation. You will find a link in the description box below. What you need to do next is to go back to Appearance, Customize, then navigate to the Front Page sections, Subscribe, and click on the Sending Blue plugin tab. Add a Sending Blue widget here. Select the form you want to use in the drop down, then click Apply. If you feel like the button is too big and you want to change its appearance, remember that you can change that in the Appearance Settings button menu of your customizer. Adjust the padding and border radius as needed. Then save your changes. Just remember that all your buttons on your website will get the same design, ok? Here comes the blog section, which shows your latest blog posts. 
a great way to engage with your visitors. If you don't want to display this section yet, you can deactivate it as you do with any other section by checking the box here or by clicking the eye on that specific item on your front page sections. Remember? You will see some default content here that you can change as needed. To do so, head to the Contact Content tab and click on Edit. Change the Find us at the office info with your own address and the Give us a ring content too. If you want to change the Get in touch title, the subtitle and the Send me a message text in the header of your form, access the General Settings tab and you will see three fields. Close the editor so you can have a better visual on what you do next and start by changing the section title, subtitle and then change what you read in the header of your contact form. Type in something like send us a message or send me an email for example. Do you see a short code instead of the contact form? Stay with me because I will show you how to create a form which you can use in this section with the WP Forms plugin installed earlier in this video. Close the customizer and head to WP Forms on your dashboard. Click Add New to create a contact form. Enter the name of your form, something like contact for example, and then choose to create a simple contact form below. That's it. Your contact form is done and you can save your work. Actually, before saving our contact form, we should set the name section to be simple, with only one field like so. It will look better in the contact section. Now, click Save here and then copy the shortcode you see after you click on this button. Close the pop-up window and the WP Forms editor. Go back to the customizer, open the contact section and in the Contact Content tab, paste the shortcode you have copied. If everything works well, your contact form should look like this. Cool, right? You can see three options here. The very top bar, the navigation options and the header settings. The very top bar is the highest position section on the site, just above the navigation area. You will find the following options here. Option to enable, disable the section, the very top bar menu and the very top bar widget area. The very top bar menu can be selected directly from the header options, very top bar. I have created a menu named contact with contact details before so I can choose it in this drop-down. See how it works? If you have no menu to choose from, please pay attention because I will show you exactly what you need to do. Just click on Create New Menu. Name your menu, make sure you check the very top bar location and then click Next. Now click on Add Items here and use the custom links to create your new menu items. First, we will add the phone number, OK? Type in tel followed by colon in the URL field right after HTTP and then enter your phone number in the navigation label. Once you finish, click on Add to menu and then create another custom link for the email address. This time, you need to type in mail to here followed by colon and then Enter your contact email in the field below. Add it to the menu and publish the changes. That's it. Now you can see those contact details. Cool, right? Furthermore, I will show you how to add a social menu here, OK? Click on Add a widget, then select the navigation menu. If you already have a social menu, you can select it in the drop-down. If not, here is what you need to do. Go back and click on Menus in the Customizer. Create new menu, name it, then click on Next. 
add items, custom links, and paste your social media profile link in this field. The link text should be the name of your social media channel, Facebook in this case. Click Add to Menu, then create as many items as you want, YouTube, Twitter, Instagram, and so on. Once you finish creating the social menu, click on Publish without checking any of these boxes below. Then go back to the very top bar in the Header Options. Select the menu you just have created and you are done. These menu items will show only the icons of your social media channel automatically, based on what you type in the URL field. If you see something wrong, no problem, because you can edit that menu like so. We are done with the very top bar, so let's move to the navigation options. Here, you can enable the search function on your menu like so. This is how it works once it's activated, ok? Then, you can choose three different layouts for your main menu. Logo on the left and menu on the right side of your screen. Logo and menu in the center of your screen. And logo to the left, a widget on the right and with the menu displayed right below these elements. You can add any available widget here a custom HTML, which can be an advertising banner, for example. Just copy the code of your banner and paste it in the content field like so. Keep in mind to use a banner size that fits your menu. That's it with the options in the navigation area. We are going to the header settings now. The header layout of your pages can be changed here. Let's go to the sample page to see what I am talking about. The default settings here is with the title of your page over the image. If you click on the next option, you can see that the title will go below the image and the third option will push the title above the header image. To see exactly how it works, we need to add a new image here. Select or upload the image you want, crop it to make it look better on the header area and that's it. If you want to have more images shown randomly, just add new images as many times as you want and click on Randomize Uploaded Headers. If you want to have a color instead, set it here, then publish the changes. You can change two colors on your website, the background color and the accent color. Choose white for the background and green for the accent color so you can see how it works. Choose your preferred color here and move to the next step. This is where you can choose what category to display on your blog page. By default, your blog page shows your latest blog post no matter what category. We've done this option available so you can choose what you want to show on your blog page. Further down, you can choose your blog layout between two models, like so. Then, you can choose how to display your blog categories. None, first or all. The blog posts on your blog page show only the excerpt by default. But, you can choose to display all the content in the blog posts too. If the excerpt option is chosen on the drop-down above, you can set how many characters will the excerpt length have here. Finally, if you want to set your blog page to infinitely scrolling until the last article on your blog, choose the infinite scroll in this drop-down. As you can see, you can add a new menu here like so, or you can edit your existing menu as well. Although you have the menu icons enabled in the OrbitFox plugin, your way to add icons to the menu items is only by accessing the settings of your menu through the dashboard. To do that, close the customizer and head to Appearance menus. Click on the plus sign on the left side of your menu item and choose a house for home. 
write blog, for the blog and so on. Set the display location of your menu, primary menu in this case, save the menu and you are done. Want to see how to create the mega menu? Follow the steps in the recommended video above and you will learn exactly how to do that. Now it's time to see how to use the menu anchors and where to get them. You will find them all in the Hestia documentation, which you will find in the description box below. Ok? The sections menu item in the demo is what I will create so you can see how it works. To do that, head to Appearance, then click on Menus. Select the primary menu and start by creating a new custom link. Enter hashtag in the URL field and name it Sections. Then just add it to the menu. Drag it to the place of your choice. Add an icon to the menu item like so. Then continue to create the submenu items, which you see in the drop down. The first element uses the features anchor. So you need to create another custom links element. But this time, the link will be the anchor of your section you want the menu item to navigate on click. So enter hashtag features in the URL field. Type in features below and then add it to the menu. What you need to do next is to drag the element slightly under sections to the right. This will set that menu item as a submenu which you will see only when you hover over the sections with your mouse. Now add a specific icon to that submenu item then continue with the second sub item which redirects to the about section. Ok? Start with the about anchor in the URL field. Type in about below and then click add to menu. Do the same with all the elements you want to have in the sub menu and use the anchors you see in the documentation of the Hestia WordPress theme. Just like the icons, you can style each menu item by using various classes. Let's add a menu item called by now to the menu and make it look like a button so you can see how it works. The URL field should be the link to the page you want your visitors to see the product or service you want to sell. Sure. You can add an icon to this item too. Then you must add the btn class to the CSS classes field. If you see no CSS field in the options below, go to the screen options and enable it by checking this box. Now add the btn class here followed by btn-primary. If you visit the site now, you will see that this one takes the color you set in the customizer as the accent color. If you go back to the settings of your menu and you will add the btn round class, you will see that the button will get a rounded border. Ok? Furthermore, if you want to create a menu in the footer area of your website, go back to the menu section on your dashboard and create a new menu called footer. Add the items you want to have in that menu Set it as your footer menu, then save your changes. That's it. We are done with the menus. If you have activated the widgets area on your blog posts and pages, you can add widgets there like so. Head to Appearance, then click on Widgets. This is the place where you'll find all your widgets. By default, you have six widgets here which you can edit, delete, or you can add new widgets as well. For example, if you drag the send in blue widget here, you can see the subscribe option active on the sidebar of your pages and your blog posts too. You can see that we have three independent widget areas here. Footer 1, Footer 2, and footer 3. Let's add a text widget in the footer 1 with a demo content. An image widget in the footer 2.
and an Instagram feed in the footer tree. To have that Instagram widget available, you need to install and activate the Instagram feed plugin. Connect it with your account and that's it. Check the recommended video above to see how to do these integrations step by step. Finally, your Hestia website is done. Now you need to start promoting it and send traffic to it. Make sure you activate the social sharing option on the OrbitFox plugin so your visitors can share your content. On the screen, you are going to see some other recommended videos, so watch them next to grow your brand new website. Hopefully, this tutorial was helpful. If it was, give it a thumbs up. Also, consider subscribing. I publish WordPress tutorials and guides weekly, and I answer all the questions you guys leave in the comments section below.